Hello everybody, this is Shane at Pulse Personal Training again, and we're here with a fan submitted request from Facebook today. We got one from Bryce Johnston, a friend of mine. He asked a question, and there was some follow up on that about what is carb cycling. So I'm going to do my best in a concise amount of time to sum up what is probably one of the more confusing terms you have heard uh, about dieting and what, what carb cycling really means uh, and how you could employ that where, whether or not you want to. So carb cycling, in, in the shortest of terms, is alternating the amount of carbohydrates you're taking on a daily basis. And I'm just going to get right into some examples here. A basic would be like a three-in-one uh, carb cycling diet. The people that are using this effectively are usually competitive bodybuilders or physique athletes, people that are trying to manipulate their body fat, and they're uh, adjusting these carbohydrate levels to uh, effectively adjust how uh, many calories they're in a deficit. What the, what the key is to burning body fat, to losing any type of weight, is being in a calorie deficit. So it's not that carbohydrates are the enemy or that fats are the enemy or that proteins are good for you uh, and can't be turned into fat. It's that something needs to be done to create a deficit. So in a three-in-one, three, two, one, you do something like a three-day, day one, two, and three would be lower in carbohydrates. And when I say low, it's individual. Individuals could use different number of carbohydrates. Uh, for me, what I would consider low would be 50. So maybe three days in a row, it's less than 50 grams in carbs for three days. And then on that fourth day, day number four, we would do a high carbohydrate day. And this is usually referred to as something like a refeed, they, uh, the justification being that after doing the low days like this, you've depleted your glycogen stores, which is a fancy word for saying, I'm out of energy, my muscles are depleted. If you've been training intensely enough and you've been doing this low-carb diet, you could very much feel like you need this refeed. So on this high day, you may go as high as you know, equal to or, or maybe even greater than, I don't know, for me, 200 grams of carbohydrates. That's a little bit over my body weight in grams. Uh, so over 200 grams. So carb cycling basically refers to this cycle right here of doing a number of low carbohydrate days, any, anywhere from uh, two to four uh, low carbohydrate days in a row, and then putting in one or two high carbohydrate days. This cycle of low and high, low and high, uh, anecdotally creates a, uh, a fat loss effect. The idea is that doing these uh, low days and these high days allows your body to I guess process uh, fat for energy more efficiently. Now let me tell you the truth. Uh, the majority of people that are watching this, if you're just someone who's got a few pounds to lose and you're not interested in competitive physique stuff, carb cycling can be a headache. Carb cycling can be something that it's not honestly easy to do in the long term because of your daily life and, and how meals play out. And it's not how I eat. I don't carb cycle myself and I am a competitive physique athlete. I do. Uh, get on stage to measure myself against other people, but this is not the system that I use. And let me tell you why I like carbs. I want all the carbs. Uh, I know myself, I will eat breads and pastas uh, if I can. And if I have ways uh, that I'm not basing my diet around things that are unrealistic for me to maintain, then it's easier for me. My diet has carbs in it all the time. And I guess you could call what I'm doing is a version of carb cycling, but my carbs are uh, low on days that I don't train. I didn't do anything to earn the carbs. So let me give you my version of what that would look like. I'm going to give you a four-day split because I train for three and then I'm off for one. So the same thing. So my three, two, one would look like this. I have day one, two, and three. Each of these is a training day. For me, I'm lifting weights on each of these days. These days for me are going to be moderate carbohydrates. I have three different levels that I will go to. And on these days, they're going to be around 200 grams of carbs on any of those given days based on the intensity of my workout. 200 grams is plenty. Believe me, it's plenty. And then on that fourth day, typically this would be the day where I'm not working out. As a non-training day, I'm going to put non-training underlined right there. That is the day that I don't need those carbohydrates. I'm not doing the weightlifting. I'm not going to be putting myself through those stresses. So on a non-training day, I'm going to have somewhere probably in the ballpark of, uh, I will call it a low, but for me it's still above what some people would do, anywhere from 120 to 160 
grams of carbohydrates on that. So if, if carb cycling, if we're just talking about what carb cycling is, is the idea that I adjust my carbohydrates on different days for different needs, then carb cycling usually in print, usually when it's referred to by popular media or diet blogs or fitness magazines, they're probably referring to some version of the three to one uh, carb cycle where it's a low to high cycle, multiple days in a row where, where the carbohydrates are kept low in the neighborhood of around uh, 50 or less grams. That's dependent on body size. And then it's backed up with a high day. But I find that this is usually a reason for people to cheat, man. They call this a refeed day. Uh, call it what you want to call it. Usually you go three days in a row like that. You're going to be famished. There's going to be foods you probably cut out that you would have cheated on. And I find that these high days are often overboard uh, if you track actually using uh, a diet journal or my fitness pal or an app or something like that. So my version, and I'm going to move this in here towards the end of the video so you can get a closer look at this and I'll get out of the camera. Uh, my version's a lot different than that. My three to one is also a cycle, if you will. Uh, but for me, it's only because I work out three days in a row and then my next day is a non-training day. My carbohydrate cycle, just to use the same phrase though, would be uh, basically the opposite of what I just gave you here. I'm eating for performance. I have uh, a training day with a moderate amount of carbohydrates, up to 200 grams. A training day with a moderate amount of carbohydrates. Another training day with a moderate amount of carbohydrates. And then finally, on my non-training day, that's when you see some lower numbers. Um, and it's only because I'm not being active that I'm, I'm pulling those numbers out. And you can see it's an adjustment of somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 40 to 60 grams of carbohydrates, which is pretty much the content of my intro workout shake. What is an intro workout shake? That's gonna be a subject for a whole different video. So uh, once again, thanks to Bryce for asking about carb cycling. Obviously that's not the whole conversation, but that's a start. So the answer is carb cycling is some form of diet where you're alternating carbohydrate intake based on days of the week or uh, workout plan. So if you watch the whole video, give me a like. If you like the explanation, give me a like. If you think the explanation sucks, give me an angry face because at least you watched it and you reacted. Uh, submit more questions if you like the video series. I've got plenty of uh, things that I can ramble and rant about. And if you want to hear something specific, let me know what it is. Maybe I'll put together a video. Thanks for watching, you guys. This is Shane at Pulse Personal Training. Have a great day.